Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on physical geography as well as evolution of geographical thought on my channel. So in this session, we are going to learn something very interesting and that is not about space in geography, that is about time. So geological time scale is the thing that we need to understand before going further ahead into other concepts. So in today's session, we are going to deconstruct this geological time scale, various concepts associated to it, for example, the mass extinctions. So we are going to discuss how to remember it through certain mnemonics, through certain important methods and also the timeline sequence and important events in the geological history of earth and humankind. So before we go ahead, please like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share the videos with others as well. So let's learn about the geological time scale. So the geological time scale, that is GTS in short we say, is a system of two things. One is chronological dating. So basically chronology is the sequence. So in sequence of time we date and the second is the classification of geological strata that is called stratigraphy. So remember these two important concepts of chronological dating and stratigraphy that holds key for geological time scale. So it is used by geologists, paleontologists, geographers and other earth scientists to describe the timing and relationship of events. So remember, geological time scale is not just about timing. It is also about the geological history of relationship of the events that occurred. So that is important. So the time scale was developed through the study of physical rock layers and relationship as well as the times when different organisms appeared. So geological time scale is not just about how rocks formed or how the cretinization happened on the rock surface or the earth surface but rather it also talks about the interrelational aspects, how the organisms developed, how the mass extinctions happened, how the organisms evolved over time period. So these evolution, extinction, all those fossilized remains and imprints, all are the parts of geological time scale that is important. So what we see here is International Union of Geological Sciences, which is the apex body we see. Right? So this was formed in 1961 that we see, all right? And this is important in terms of what we say is the creation of this geological time scale. So now, when we talk about stratigraphy, so what comes into your head? What kind of picture? So this is one of the pictures that you can see from the field that was taken in Ladakh. So what you see here is various layers of sediments of different time periods, right? So what we see here is, that from the modern era to the earlier era, what we see different time periods and different time periods having various layers in the surface of the earth. So this is what we call as stratigraphy. And who does stratigraphy? The International Commission on Stratigraphy, that is ICS, sometimes referred to by the unofficial name as well, that is International Stratigraphic Commission. And this is the daughter organization or the subcommittee of what we understood as the International Union for Geological Sciences. So that is what is responsible for the stratigraphical, geological and geochronological matters on the global scale. So if you have this question that who decides these times, it's basically this International Commission on Stratigraphy and also the apex body that is International Union for Geological Sciences, which is the part of International Science Council. So now if we look at the geological history that we say, so first of all, the largest unit of that history is called eons. So that is the first thing to remember. So what is an eon? It is the largest unit of the geological history. So eons, the example can be Hadean, Archean, Proterozoic and Phanerozoic. So if you look here, it is H-A-P-P. -P. So if you see here, it is Hadean, Archean, Proterozoic and Phanerozoic. And then in this Phanerozoic, which is the most recent of these eons, most important is the further eras. So they will be studying eras as well. And in the eras, when we say eras, what is there? Example is Pleozoic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic. 
and scaling it down further in one era there are various periods and in one period there are various epoch so what we see is this is one classification of geological history in which the larger unit or the largest unit is the eons under which there are several eras under which there are several periods and under which there are several epochs so eon era period and epoch but remember under one epoch there is also something called age so we are going to elaborate it further today so now the question arises that how can we remember this table it has so much of information so what is that method so let's understand something called mnemonics now you'll ask me that what is mnemonics so mnemonics is one of the important methods of training ourselves training our brain to remember something in a easier format a format in which our brain understands comprehensively so this is called mnemonics so we are going to learn some mnemonics and understand the making of this geological history the table that we study under geological time scale so first thing the oldest one that we say is the eon so what is the first thing the eons then what we have era then we have period and then we have epoch so this is one se sequence that we see so eons eras periods and epoch so this is one sequence now what we see here is the oldest of this eon all right so that is called what we understand as the oldest eon is together known as the precambrian part right so which was before this phanerozoic what we say so what are those hadean archean proterozoic so hadean archean proterozoic are together part of the precambrian times all right and what is part of the cambrian so which is after this proterozoic so in shortcut in mnemonics if we want to read this or remember this remember this word happens what is here happens so what is happens h a p p so what we see here is hadean archean proterozoic and phanerozoic so just add e n s so it happens so this is one way to remember this the eons now let's go to the next one that is the era so how can we remember these eras remember all the eras that we study here are part of this phanerozoic that is the recent times so recent means that it is not part of the precambrian it is part of the cambrian now so in cambrian what we see is the paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic three eras so how can we remember these three eras remember this see it's ppmc so what is this ppmc so one is what we see is the precambrian right the second is paleozoic then we have mesozoic and then we have cenozoic right so how can we remember this ppmc by this statement that is please pass me cake so as you ask your friend to pass cake to you so please pass me cake so remember p p m c so what is that precambrian paleozoic mesozoic and cenozoic so this is one small statement this is what we call mnemonics the second the next one is what we call as periods so periods are part of the one larger era so what we see here is paleozoic having several periods right from cambrian to the permian isn't it this entire segment so cambrian ordovician silurian devonian carboniferous which is further subdivided into pennsylvanian and mississippian and then permian so how can we remember these periods now remember what we have in the periods is paleozoic right and under paleozoic what we see here is there is a statement cause dcp so cause i am dcp so if you see because i am dcp so this is one statement so what is this cause i am dcp remember cause is cambrian ordovician silurian so this is what you have as cause right and then what we have as dcp so what is this dcp devonian right carboniferous and permian so dcp so in paleozoic era how can we divide it into periods using this particular statement of cause i am dcp so that is one way to remember then going to the next one that is mesozoic era we have three triassic jurassic and cretaceous so it is tjc right so what is this tjc you can make a sentence out of it 
take you to jail central so earlier it was cause i am a dcp so if you want to remember in sequence it is cause i am a dcp i'll take you to jail central so that is a way of forming a sentence right so paleozoic cause i am a dcp mesozoic take you to jail central so you can remember it like that then what we see is the cenozoic so in cenozoic what we see here is neogene and paleogene these are part of the tertiary period and then we have the quaternary period so largely what is there it is tq but in bracket we have pn right because it is paleogene and neogene period so tertiary is of two types that is paleogene and neogene so it is tpn bracket q so what is that try pen a coat so remember when you quote something so this is one statement which you can remember so try pen a coat so that is what we have tertiary in which you have pen so that is in bracket if you want to remember this pen is your paleogene and neogene and coat that is q so coat is basically quaternary so that is how you remember the periods in cenozoic era now let's go ahead and learn about the fourth one that is the epoch the youngest one so we have several epochs looking here so paleocene eocene oligocene miocene pliocene pleistocene holocene so how will you remember this so we are going to learn further the details of what happened along all these eras and periods and at last when we come to this epoch we'll be also making a mnemonic of this particular epoch as well so let's go ahead and learn one by one what happened from the beginning so the first thing that we see here is the eon the era period epoch so that is what million years ago mya so what we see is hadean so roughly what we see is the formation of earth that is 4.6 billion years ago remember so that is what 4600 million years right then what we have is the archean that is the next segment roughly 4000 then what we have is the proterozoic roughly 2500 and then what we see is about 541 million years ago remember from 2500 to 5 so 541 million years ago what we see is this demarcation where now this precambrian ends and the further cambrian that is the next phenerozoic segment starts so what are the developments that we see here during hadean the origin of life is here right so formation of earth crust is there then what we see here is in archean we have bacteria and algae formations right the earliest known earth rocks are there then what we see here is further in proterozoic we have simple multi-celled organisms so from single cell bacteria to multiple cell bacteria organisms first iron deposits have been found to be of proterozoic times right abundance of carbonate rocks then further supercontinent which was formed for the first time was part of this particular time period and then complexity increased with evolution so complex multi-celled organisms developed so what we see here is this in this hap right from 4600 to 4000 right to 2500 and then 541 so this is the demarcation line and these are the developments that happened during this particular segment of the eon right now let's go ahead into phanerozoic eon and understand the eras so that we have to learn for it. so now coming to this phanerozoic the first era remember that is paleozoic right so under paleozoic what we see is these periods so many periods as we have classified by this particular mnemonics that is cause i am a dcp so c o s d c p so cambrian ordovician silurian devonian and this is part of carboniferous and then permian so now we need to understand what is mass extinction from this particular point so what happened from 541 we start going further ahead and we see marine invertebrates now in this situation in cambrian so we see early shell organisms rise of corals so now remember corals are part of cambrian right so c for coral c for cambrian if you can remember that then primitive fish and trilobites so this is part of ordovician right then what we see is during this transfer this during this change during 443 million years ago what do you observe from ordovician 
this silurian time that change was through this mass extinction so that is the first mass extinction between what between this o and s of cos so cos so this is where the first mass extinction is there right then further in devonian what we see first forests which are evergreens that we know then first amphibians come in so fishes and amphibians what we see here further in devonian then again from devonian to this carboniferous where you have large parts of the carbon the coal extract now coming out so carbon is named from carboniferous right so carboniferous was that particular time which accompanied this particular mass extinction number two right so between devonian and mississippian so if you say between the upper and lower carboniferous so remember this is lower carboniferous then this is upper carboniferous so what happened mississippian and devonian in between them during this particular million year that is 358.9 so almost 360 million years ago there was the second mass extinction that happened so first reptiles come in during this carboniferous time right then coal forming swamps and sharks abundant so what we see is the maximum coal formation during this particular time period of carboniferous period so the next part is from about 300 to 251 this is called permian remember the permian was that particular phase where we find this supercontinent pangaea so remember now pangaea was formed at that particular time which is permian so Pangaea and Permian, PP, you can remember like that. And then again, at the end of Permian, about 251 million years ago, there was this third mass extinction again. So this is the three mass extinction in Phanerozoic first era, that is Paleozoic. Now we are going to Mesozoic further. So now let's go ahead and learn Mesozoic. So in Mesozoic, what we see is these three important periods. What is that? Triassic. Jurassic and Cretaceous, right? So, TJC. So, that is what? Take you to jail central because I am a DCP, remember? So, take you to jail central. So, 251.9, that is another mass extinction coming into the Triassic. Then, first dinosaurs, first major reptiles, and again going from Triassic to Jurassic about 200 million years ago there is another mass extinction so this is mass extinction number three that we know and this is mass extinction number four so this is fourth mass extinction that further we go into the Jurassic age so you remember Jurassic Park you must have seen the movie the age of dinosaurs very famous so dinosaurs and diverse further flowering plants and other reptiles that we find in this particular time period so this is largely called the age of reptiles so if you are being asked about the question that which is the age of reptiles remember mesozoic is the age of reptiles largely the triassic jurassic and cretaceous further going from jurassic to cretaceous what do we observe the placental mammals for the first time so those mammals which carry their children in their womb. It, it, there is an attachment in placenta, what we say, the umbilical cord. So placenta formation was there during this particular evolution time period. And again, what we see here is about 66, 65 million years ago, the fifth mass extinction happening. So the age of dinosaurs coming to the end with this, right, in the Mesozoic era. Now let's go ahead and look at the most recent era, that is the Cenozoic. So what we see here is the Cenozoic era, as we know, this is T and Q. So under T we have Paleogene and Neogene. So what we have learned is T bracket P N and Q. So try pen a quote. So remember this. Now what we see here is that after this fifth mass extinction, now we see early primates here, right? So what is important here is the spread of grassy ecosystem the age of mammals come into the picture so what we see is the age of mammals the start of the modern humans come into the picture in this particular era of cenozoic so going from tertiary to quaternary we find the development and evolution happening and what we see is the modern human come in the further quaternary period so under quaternary period, what we have is this particular epoch. What is that? Pleistocene. So remember this Pleistocene is when what we see is the arrival or the advent of modern humans. 
But before we go ahead to this epoch, let's understand that how to remember this epoch now. So what we see here is that there are number of epochs in the same Cenozoic era. So that is Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene and Holocene. So how to remember this? Now, if you make a shortcut, it is P-E-O-M-P-P-H, right? So what is Paleocene? Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene, Pleistocene and Holocene. So this is the shortcut. Now if you want to form a sentence, it's very interesting. So put eggs on my plate, please honey. So a person is asking to his wife that please honey, put eggs on my plate. So this is a sentence to remember. So P-E-O-M-P-P-H. So P-E-O-M-P-P-H. So that is what put eggs on my plate please honey so this is how you have to remember now going from the 66 that is the time of mass extinction we are now moving ahead towards the 1 million year mark right and furthermore so what we see here is that the holocene and the pleistocene where we see largely the modern humans come in and then comes the human history so when we have learned about the phenerozoic right from the paleozoic to Mesozoic to Cenozoic eras, what we see is number of mass extinction that is about five mass extinctions. So what is that? So remember 443 which was Ordovician, so O, then we have Devonian that is about 359 million years ago, so 359, then we have Permian, so this is about 252 million years ago, then we have the Triassic, so to going from Triassic to Jurassic, so that is about 200 million years ago and then Cretaceous that is about 66 million years ago. So what we see here is this ODP and TC. So remember this ODP and TC in this particular sequence from 443 to 60. And now it is being said that currently we are ongoing into the sixth mass extinction because of the climate change. So remember when we say the concept of sixth mass extinction, it is currently happening because lots of species are now being lost. So that is important here. Now, another thing that is important in geological time scale is not the sequence just eon, era, period and epoch, but also this age thing. So what is this age thing and how did it come up? Remember, further this Holocene has been divided into three different ages. So that is the most recent part. What we see here is about the 12,000 years old history. So remember, right from 12,000 years to 8,200 years ago to this 4,200 years ago in the before Christ time. So that is what we see is 12,000 BC when we say this is the time when we say it is Greenlandian age. What we see here is current interglacial begins, sea level flooding of Doggerland and Sundaland, Sahara desert formation happens, Neolithic agriculture starts. So that is about 12,000 BC to 10,000 BC. Remember that time? Now, next phase was this 8.2. So that is about 8,200 years before Christ. And what is we say the beginning of Bronze Age civilization, right? So from Neolithic, we go to this Bronze Age that we say. So Neolithic basically means new tools. So that is how it is Neolithic. So Bronze Age is about 8,200 years old. And that has been classified as North Grippian. And then further, about 4200 years before Christ, so that is before Common Era, so 4200 CE, right, before Common Era, BCE, this is the time another demarcation has now recently come up and which has been named after this particular cave in Meghalaya, we know, so that is why it is called Meghalayan Age. So Meghalayan Age is now currently continuing from 4200 before Christ to present and going on. So, Phenerozoic Eon, then we go into this era which is Cenozoic, then into Quaternary period, then going into this Holocene Epoch and under this Holocene Epoch, currently we are now continuing into the Meghalayan Age. So, that is the particular scaling down of geological time scale. Now, there is something also used in this colloquial term that is called Anthropocene. What is this Anthropocene and how does it come? This term was coined by two scientists that is Paul Crutzen and Eugene Stormer in 2000. So to describe what? The current time in which humans have had enormous impact on the environment. So 
after holocene what we say is that advent of anthropocene but evidence was evaluated on the group voting and this was the new geological age confirmed by the international agency in august 2016 so holocene is not the recent one now anthropocene right from the meghalayan age is now the current geological time in which we are there presently so now when we have learned about the geological time scale the history of evolution of mankind as well as various mass extinctions and how to remember it in easy way i hope you understood it well so furthermore we'll be coming up with lectures on physical geography so stay tuned stay safe and all my best wishes to you